wherein I, I want you to understand that, that wherein I am very partial to this title, amen, Operation Obedience. I think it's one of my more clever series titles, amen, uh, amen, but I want to let you know about something. Uh, the fact that we're talking about obedience, amen, it is not glamorous, it is not catchy, it is not something that people just run around talking about that they want to do, amen, and I know that there are plenty of other initiatives and slogans that preachers come up with that sound a whole lot better, and, and they're, they're well more received, they're more received than talking about obedience, amen, and some of these catchy slogans, amen, people just run with it, they just talk about it all the time, and I'm not saying that they are wrong, amen, but I'm saying this, that sometimes they can cause people to focus, amen, on the wrong things, and sometimes when folk get to talking about that, that that we're going to name it and claim it, amen, or expect the miracle, or be blessed and highly favored. All these sayings, and don't get me wrong, are based on the word of God, amen. So I'm not telling you, amen, that <clears throat> I'm not telling you that I'm trying to condemn anybody that's using those, because they, those are based on the word of God. God, amen. I'm not, I'm not condemning anybody that's trying to teach that or to use that, amen. But what I am saying is this, that without the proper focus, amen, on obedience to the word of God, those catchy sayings, amen, they can foster in you a what's in it for me attitude that will erode your desire to seek the face of God. Come on, somebody better walk with me. You see, everything about God, everything about God is, it is contingent upon us drawing nearer to him or nearer to God. Nearer, we need to get nearer. And look, and we need to have an attitude, not of what can I get, but how close can I get to the Lord. I don't want to just seek the hand of God for a blessing, amen. I want to seek the face and the boot of you got to understand when you get to looking at the promises of God, you got to know this. In order for that word to be really effective in your life, amen, you have to completely and wholeheartedly be ready to obey that word. Come on, man. See, obedience to the word of God is less about the immediate prize, amen, but more about the grind. What is the grind? Well, the grind is fighting the good fight. The grind is keeping the faith. The grind is uh, the grind is running this race with patience. Uh, the grind is finishing my course. Uh, that's the grind, amen. Uh, only to be able to see Jesus, amen. Uh, that ought to be the benefit of the grind. Uh, sometimes folks just want to seek the Lord for what they can get. Uh, when, when you get the promise and healings and miracles, uh, when you get to be promised and zero on the back end of your bank account, uh, and brand new cars, folks line up. Uh, you can get from, look, watch this. You can get from, from the, the gift to 1995, amen, for a prayer call that will turn into a brand new car. Brother, then you can give them to give their time and offer it up to the Lord just to see the kingdom go forth. You can do that. Because they see an immediate end, amen. But I'm here to tell you that I bless the Lord for the grind. I learned a long time ago how to get in my grind, amen. My granddad used to get up at 3 30 every morning and he used to stop hogs. That was part of the grind. As soon as the day break, he would be out there off the dock, amen. And he was shut it off the dog all day long. And when he got done with that, he went and cut somebody's grass or shovel somebody walk or put the manure down in somebody's field, amen. Then he came home and worked on the hog pen until he got dark. Then he came in and ate and cut up the dick. We need to find out what does say of the Lord so we can go ahead and get our grind on and stop trying to get our groove on. We come to church to get our groove so we forget about the grind. You can't forget about the grind. Because the grind is what's going to take you to heaven. Amen. To shake it in the box. Amen. That's all right. I don't mind shopping for the Lord. I don't mind giving God some praise on my, Giving God my hoop and my holler. I don't mind. Because it was his from the get go. I don't mind giving it back to him. But after all of that, God still wants to see me grind. Come on, somebody. He still wants to see me to obey him. 
Amen. Can I tell you that uh, there are some blessings that come with serving the Lord, uh, but the manifestations pale in comparison, amen, to the gift of eternal life. Uh, when Jesus sent the 70 out, amen, uh, he told them to go out in the power of his name. Uh, and you know what they did? They went out casting out demons, saving souls, healing the sick, and they came back rejoicing. Uh, but in Luke 10, Jesus said, don't rejoice in that. Uh, you go ahead and rejoice in, in the fact that you have been obedient and your name is written in the book of life. Yeah. Let me tell you right now. Your name won't get in the book of life unless you learn to be obedient. Come on. Come on, somebody. Amen. I want you to understand that people have been conditioned to think that obedience is something bad. But that's because many of them only have learned, amen, how to be in subjection to flawed people. Amen. Flawed people do flawed things. Amen. And sometimes we are right to buck against Lord, people, amen, but don't you try to put your hand up on God. Because now we're talking about obedience to God, operational obedience. It is God that is asking you to obey his word, not somebody else's, and not our own thoughts or our own desires, but that we would obey the word, the will, and the way of the Lord God himself. Obey he that is righteous. Obey he that is holy. He that never fails. He that is not late. He that is always on time. That's who God is and obey our Lord God that created the heavens and the earth and took the time to form mankind out of the dust of the earth. That's the part that's saying that you need to obey me. See, obedience is what the Lord desires from you and not so much what you want to do. The truth of the matter is what you want really don't matter. Amen. Come on. What you want really don't take a back seat to God. In the back seat, then we're gonna get back to you later. But let me tell you, your desire to obey God or not to obey God don't even matter. It can't even take a back seat, it can't even take a ride in God's car. Because God said obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. God said obedience is the key, amen. The obedience is the key to spiritually flowing in God. It is the key to moving in God, and it is the key to receiving from God. Do you see what I'm saying? It ain't the catch of slogan that's gonna get you the blessing, amen. And, uh, it's the walking upright. Uh, it's the walking before God circumspectly. Uh, it's the walking before God doing his will. Uh, it's the being holy before God as God is holy. Amen. Amen. It's going to get you everything that you need uh, in the Lord. Come on, somebody. Uh, you got to understand the truth, amen, and know the truth and experience the Lord in such a way. I want you to know the truth today, that you can experience the Lord in such a way that your joy will be full and complete. And not only that, but I want your joy to be sustainable, amen. See, you got to have some sustainable joy, amen. See, when you make up in your mind that I'm... Lord. When you make up in your mind uh, that I'm going to serve the Lord, uh, no matter what, uh, can I tell you the ups and downs of life and living uh, will not affect your relationship with God. Uh, temptations and fleshly lusts uh, don't rule you. Uh, I said don't rule you. I didn't say it wouldn't come. Uh, but temptations and fleshly lusts don't rule you. Uh, your emotions don't dictate to you. Your faith stands from year to year, from month to month, from week to week, from day to day, even minute by minute for some. Uh, hello, don't try to be cute. Amen. Uh, and act like your faith and your relationship with God uh, has never took a tumble every now and then like the stop. Uh, uh, come on, don't act like you ain't never been in church. Uh, turn up the flow, turn up the bedroom. Give God praise. And then you step outside the church and you got the flicker and you got the ponder on whether or not I should do the right thing or not. Uh, you'll never have that problem if you decide to obey the word of God. But if they will live, amen, that your, that your actions begin to mirror God's standard, amen. Church obedience to God is the framework of life, of a life that is pleasing to God, amen. Everything else that you could ever possibly do to give God glory and honor, amen, it all falls under the head of whether or not you are going to be obedient, amen. And if we are going to really, really get with God's program, huh? you've got to be obedient. Huh? See, part two of this series, amen, is trying to get us to that point. Huh? The title of the part two of this series, Operation Obedience, will be this open-ended question. Huh? What would you do? Amen. Yeah. Uh, 
What would you do to get what you need? What would you do to have what you want? To? What would you do to secure your future? What would you do to increase your value? What would you do to increase your, your productivity? These questions are not a part of some soul stealing deal with the devil or asking you to do something illegal, immoral, or even scandalous. Amen. No, I'm asking the question to find out what would you, what are you willing to do to secure the great things that God has in store for you. We talked about it already. Great things. To keep on doing great things. To keep on doing great things for me. Well, the only way that God is ever going to be able to be great, do great, and act great in your life is that you learn to be obedient. So I'm asking the open ended question today what are you willing to do? Come on, come on. When you look at our text today, we're going to be able to answer this question, amen, uh, to this blind man. Uh, there was a need of a touch from the Lord. Uh, and looking at the blind man, uh, this question, uh, with this question in mind, what are you willing to do? Uh, you're going to see some things uh, he was willing to do. Uh, first day, uh, if you look at uh, if you look at the text, uh, we see Jesus passing by. Uh, well, uh, it's really in the first verse. It's not in your text, amen. Uh, but it's in the chapter, chapter 9, verse 1. It said he see Jesus passing by and he saw a blind man. So the first thing that this blind man did was he allowed Jesus to minister to him. Amen. And some of y'all might think that that was no big deal. It was on, Jesus. I would let Jesus minister to me too. Amen. 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 But you got to understand that you got the benefit of, of, of 2020 vision that comes along with hindsight. Let me tell you how I was going down in that day. Jesus was not widely accepted at this time. The scribes and the Pharisees were still trying to discredit him and even kill him. Matter of fact, if you go back up a few verses in the preceding chapter, in chapter 8, in the latter verses, you find out that they got so mad with Jesus, uh, that they surrounded Jesus, him them up, or so they thought, had him in a, in a corner, and they picked up stones to kill him. Uh, and the Bible says in John 8 and 39, it said that Jesus hid himself. That's what the word said, but can I tell you what the word means? Uh, it does not mean that he ran and hid, uh, but that he covered himself, uh, amen, in a spiritual cloak uh, that kept him from their eyes. Uh, if they only had malice in their heart, uh, they had a man in tension for Jesus. How many of you know that even in the midst of a bad situation, God will be a woman, God will be a couple all around you. It'll be like Christ in that place. Amen. And while he was coming, Jesus just walked right on through the middle of all of them. Amen. The Bible said that he passed by. He passed through. He passed through the evil ones. And he was inside the temple. And right then, verse 8, I'm sorry, chapter 8 transitions right into chapter 9. That as he was walking out of the temple, he happened to walk by a blind man. Amen. Now, if I was doing so much running from the devil, I would have stopped for this blind man, right? I, I told you Jesus wasn't doing no running. He had to cover himself. And he was going to the next day. Let me tell you, well, this is free right here. Sometimes when the Lord brings you out of a situation, he don't bring you out of the situation to hide you so people can't hear from you. He brings you out of that so you can give it this. To bring you out of that so you can give it this. Stand there, and not only could he get a little change, but he could also hear the latest gossip. You know, 
Y'all might didn't know this, but church folks talk all the time. <laughs> Amen. 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 He was God was in a vantage point. But he saw Jesus. And, well, Jesus saw him and stopped him. And Jesus began to come around. Now, this man was taking a risk because he was so near the temple. Those that didn't want Jesus in the temple, they were going to see him talking to Jesus. But he said, I'm going to allow him to minister to me. We asked him the question, what would you do? You got to understand uh, the first thing uh, you got to allow Jesus, amen. Uh, if you want to be obedient, uh, you got to allow Jesus uh, to minister to you, amen. Uh, yeah, there is some risk involved, uh, but don't lose sight of this. Uh, Jesus is the word, uh, and so if you want to obey Jesus and obey the word of God, uh, there is some jeopardy involved. Uh, the folk that he was, uh, the folk that didn't want Jesus might cut him off. Uh, the folk might stop calling you. Uh, they might stop dishing oh, gossip to you and start talking about you. Amen. When it is time to obey the Lord. Can I tell you it's a risk? Folk will call you crazy. Folk will tell you it don't take all of that. That is something risk. But when you want to obey the Lord, you better be willing to make up in your mind. What would I do? Amen. See, the Lord began to minister to us, amen, by his word. And we should, and when we start putting God's word above everything else, the devil will get stirred up, amen. But let me tell you today, it is worth the risk. You just got to understand and know this, that everybody don't have a revelation of who Jesus is. So thank you just a man. Amen. In that day, they were trying to figure out uh, was Jesus Isaiah or, or Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Uh, in that day, they were saying uh, that he was John the Baptist. Uh, some people even called Jesus a drunk. Uh, in the Bible, they say a wine devil. Well, they even called him a devil. Uh, but I want you to understand I think Jesus said it best. Uh, that Jesus described himself in the book of John. He described himself as the bread of life, the living water, the door, the light, the resurrection, the way, the truth. And the son of God. I tell you, Jesus is going to protect I let you know now the son of God. If you decide to let me minister to you, if that's what you would do to be obedient, I'm more than qualified. Come on, somebody. I'm more than qualified. Amen. I'm going to qualify my friend to you. Uh, to be obedient, what would you do? Uh, come on, somebody, give God some praise. Yeah. Yeah. We can learn from this blind man with the question in mind, what would you do? Uh, then you can say this, uh, that he allowed the spirit to have his way. Come on, come on. He allowed the spirit to have his way. Let me be honest with you today. Sometimes it seems to me that God is funny. Amen. He just be tripping sometimes. Amen. You know, we ain't got to get casual like that. You know. We got to get like that. I, I don't see him every day. I don't just see him on Sunday. Amen. I see him every day. We familiar with each other. Amen. Look, you already know in order to obey him, it's a risk involved. Uh, amen. But you choose to obey him anyway. Amen. amen. But then the Lord comes along and asks you to do something, something that looks so crazy <laughs> and strange <laughs> and almost deranged. <laughs> amen. Look crazy everybody. Even, even, even yourself, Lord. I know I don't want you to do it, but I don't even come on there. It's going to make no sense. I don't know if I ever know these guys out there. Let me tell you, God is famous for asking us to do the crazy thing. He's famous for it. Look all through the Bible. When Moses, when, when Moses decided to follow God's direction, and God, God took the children of Israel, Israel out of Egypt, and he led them straight to the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army in the back. Mountains all around. They looking like, where in the world are we going? Moses, how in the world are we doing? He said, oh, my, 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 my. Look, when the men, amen, the sons of the prophets had to 
decided to do no work. Y'all think preachers don't do no work, but the son of the prophet decided to cut down some trees. They ain't have an axe. They borrowed an axe. Amen. The axe head flew off in the road. Uh -huh. A borrowed axe. Uh -huh. What we gonna do? You know we told preachers we ain't got no money. They called to the prophet Elisha. Elisha, they say Elisha, the axe head done floated, done fell in the river. What we gonna do? God told Elisha to do something crazy. Told him to get a stick. Throw it in the river. And you know what happened? The iron axe head hit the back shore. Throw it up to the top. You never made it get that thing out the wall. I'm just saying, amen. You got to learn to obey God's word. Even in some of the stuff that God asks you to do, you're crazy, amen. You better act like, you better do like Proverbs 3, 5 through 7 says. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lead not to me. I said, I own understanding. And in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. But look, look, look. This is the part I love, but be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. We can do all the other stuff, but we still think we're smarter than God. But you gotta learn that you ain't smarter than God. And you gotta learn that you gotta get away from evil. And I ain't just talking about the evil that's in your heart. Sometimes you gotta get away from the evil that's in your friend's heart. And in your friend's heart. And when you're attempting to be obedient and do it the way that God said do it, it is your friends that begin to speak up, amen. And they begin to bring you a bad report. When God says it's a land over there flowing with milk and honey, you can have it. And they'll tell you, no, he got milk and honey, but he got giants over there too. When God tells you, when God tells you, step out on favor, they'll tell you, well, yeah, I believe in favor. But you know what God gave us from sin? Yeah, God gave God did. And God ain't never called you to do nothing for him that you can't help you for yourself. You just gotta, you gotta get it started, amen. You gotta plant a seed, but God still called you to live by faith. Don't have to have faith when you just walk in the foolishness, boy. Alright? Alright? Don't let me God tell you you have got faith. And then you go out and eat pancakes and serve in the morning. I'm just saying. God will heal you, but don't, but don't be silly. Don't walk in foolishness. But if you do what you're supposed to do for the Lord, don't let nobody stop you. Don't let nobody block you. They may be right and ring, but faith and favor know no earthly bounds. Amen. That's all I'm telling you. Put God and effort in God. And what? What God do for you, amen. You may get rid of evil reports here. See, God wants us to do a new thing. God wants to do a new thing in us, amen. And in order for God to do a new thing in you, you have to be willing to do just what he said. No matter what it looks like to you or others. If it lines up, this is the caveat right here. If it lines up with the word, amen. If it lines up with the spirit of the living God, if it is in decency and in order, if it is giving God the glory, yes. you better go ahead and obey God. Yes. Um, you better go ahead and obey God. Yes. It's some of y'all that's right here that don't peep out the sixth verse. See, I, see, in the midst of this man allowing God to minister, Jesus to minister to him, uh, Jesus don't even ask the man if I can. Uh, Sometimes I, I try to be so polite in, in the gospel. I try to be so polite. I try to ask people, do you mind? I try to ask people, do you mind if I minister to you? I try to be so polite in the gospel. But I see Jesus here saying, I ain't got time for politeness. Jesus spit on the ground. He spit on the ground. He didn't even ask the man. You know, when you're blind, he's got a super good hearing. That man probably had his spit. Hit the Some of y'all here right now today and you about to go home and tell somebody uh, how in the world did Jesus spitting on the ground line up with the word of God? Amen. If you wouldn't have put no spit up on me, man. Amen. Somebody think it. Amen. Look, uh, and, uh, look, I think you think it that way. Amen. So I guess I know your answer to the question, what would you do? Oh, <laughs> uh, you wouldn't do that. Amen. You wouldn't let the Lord spit on you. But look, in my simple faith, it tells me like this. If Jesus is doing the spitting, he can spit on me anytime. Yeah. 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 Ye
Amen. But some of y'all depend on your pastor, amen. To take it a little deeper, amen. So theologically, can I break it down for you, amen? amen. Look, the word of God, the, the word of God that Jesus was riding up with is found in Genesis 2 and 7. Right? And the word said that, and the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into him, into his nostrils, the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Can I tell you, God formed man with the dust, yes, with the dirt, yes. But the following, amen, but the forming of man, even in the image of God uh, was not enough. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, because look, by just forming man uh, in God's image, uh, all God did was made a, a good looking statue. Amen. That's what the word said. Uh, because uh, the Bible said that God completed the work, uh, amen, by breathing into the man the breath of life. Uh, and then the man became a living soul. Uh, he began to move. Uh, he began to have he began to have a heartbeat. He began to have blood running warm through his veins. Before that, he was just a good looking statue. Yeah. 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 Look, uh, now let me tell you this part. Uh, there had to be some water uh, in the breath of life. Oh, Amen. Yeah. How do you know, Pastor? Because science tells us uh, that the human body is made up of at least 60%. Maybe 65%. On, Depending man. on a good day, maybe 75% more. Amen. 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 And if the breath of life is what got you jump started, on, there had to be some water put in you. Come so on, can man. I tell you all Jesus did for this man to repair his blinded eyes was using the same material on, that he was created with. Amen. Amen. And to all of you that might say, mm, it don't take all that, but just can I say it is? It did. Amen. It did. Amen. Amen. How do you know it don't take all of that? Amen. How do you know that it ain't what God is doing for you in this season? How do you know that God is not taking the foolish things to compound the wise? How do you know? You never know until you try to be obedient to him. Amen. Can I tell you, the Bible calls us a peculiar people. Amen. So look, this should be all right if every now and then. Uh, amen. If God do some peculiar things uh, and ask us to do some peculiar things amen. in his life. Uh, oh, just so he can get the glory. Come on, somebody. Yeah. 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 The peculiar thing. He let, the, he let Jesus minister to him. Man. Yeah. But the last thing I'll tell you today uh, that this blind man did, uh, what would he be willing to do? Amen. Uh, the last thing he had to be willing to do, uh, he had to be willing to do just what Jesus said to him. Amen. amen. For everything that had happened, amen, thus far, it still all came down to this. The blind man took the rest. He allowed Jesus to minister to him. He gave the strange thing, the peculiar thing, amen. Uh, he let this man spit on the ground and rub it all across his eyes. But the healing was not yet complete. Jesus is still telling the man, now he's telling him to go wash your eyes. What would the blind man do? Would he leave the comfortable place um, uh, and go wash in the pool of Siloam? Uh, yes, I did say comfortable place. Uh, even though we know that he was a beggar uh, because he had no income. Even though we know that he was blind, uh, sitting out in front of the temple every day uh, to beg alms. But I did say comfortable place. Uh, because see, for us, even in the midst uh, of, of being uh, not in complete compliance with God, uh, we learn how to be content uh, in every situation. Uh, we can learn how to be content. Uh, we can learn how to deal with it. Uh, we learn how to go through a bad situation. Uh, we learn how to cope uh, with being sick. Amen. We learn how uh, we learn how to be friendless. Uh, we learn how to be joyless. Uh, we learn how to be uh, financially unstable. Amen. Uh, we learn uh, to deal with so much. Uh, amen. Uh, even though we know we would rather see God move, uh, we ain't got to the point uh, where we are completely yielded unto God. Uh, completely yielded and in obedience. Uh, and so I'm telling you right now, uh, you can't walk the way God say walk uh, and not find a blessing every now and then. Uh, you can't do what God said you uh, and not find uh, a blessing every now and then. You just can't do it. But sometimes 
time we find ourselves in the comfortable place uh, to say, obey God, uh, oh, it will take it, take you out of your comfort zone. Uh, because, uh, you are not walking according to your will, your way, your thoughts, uh, but you begin to walk according to a higher power. You begin to walk according to a righteousness that is God. Uh, you begin to walk, uh, you begin to walk according to the word of him that was uh, and, and shall be. Uh, he was from the beginning, uh, he was before the beginning. Uh, he shall be after the end of the end of God. You are talking about uh, walking according to the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Matter of fact, he's more than the beginning, and he is much more than the end. And he is God Almighty. And I'm going to tell you sometimes, it ain't comfortable to be with God calling you. Sometimes I have to look at my drive of 15 years and say, God told me to do this. And then I duck. And I don't know if she's going to stay in this thing. But you know what she told me? I don't know why you act like I'm a bad one. And I've been with you for all these years. I don't get it. It's gonna get this thing wrong with you. You gotta do more. You gotta get this thing done. In Jesus' name, amen. You gotta be willing to leave that place in God and do what you need to do for the Lord. So you can get the you can get God grace on your you can get God grace on your purpose. You already got a purpose, baby. God already got a plan for you. Huh? And now you need the grace of God to carry through. Huh? And the grace of God is spreading all through and about your obedience. Come on, some of the people that had made life comfortable for this blind man uh, were the very people telling him uh, not to take the risk, uh, not to do that new thing. Uh, now Jesus was telling him after all that he had endured uh, and tried in the name of Jesus. Uh, you mean to tell me that there is more? Yes, uh, there is more. Uh, amen. Uh, Jesus told him to go wash in the pool uh, of Simone. Uh, you had to get this, y'all. Uh, this was a blind man uh, who didn't know his way around. Uh, he knew how to be at the temple. He was comfortable. There, uh, but now Jesus, you tell him to take a half a mile trip. Huh? Now you you might think a half a mile ain't that far, huh? but do it with your eyes closed. If I ask you right now, huh? if I ask you right now to close your eyes, as many times as you've been in goodwill, as many times as you walked down these steps, as many times as you don't walk up and down Monroe, some of y'all that lived in this area, walk down Marshall, the walk down Clay, amen. Uh, the, the big of Broad Street. And I tell you, that it's less than a mile, half a mile to Broad Street, and I say here. Leave out this building right now. Close your eyes. Walk in this stuff and walk the broad street. Don't get hit by no cars, eh? <laughs> and you see how easy it is. This man had a half a mile to go. That look, in the midst of his half a mile that he had to walk, uh, there was some other folk that didn't want to see him do right. Uh, there was some mischievous kids. Mischievous kids around the temple. They had nothing, you know the preacher kids probably. They had nothing better to do. Blind people come walking. They put, they put blocks in front of them and see the they call it a stomach. That's why they call it a stomach block. And people will put block in front of you, sit back and watch you fall. When you, when you struggle, when you struggle to get up, people will run in on your shirt and your back and put the same block back there and watch you, and watch you fall again. This is what you got to deal with. When Jesus said, not only do the crazy, not to let you be down the crazy. What would you do? You get what you mean. He got, he got all this in his mind. He got all this thing in his mind. Blind man, crooked with fear, paralyzed with fear, but can't see. No, he wanted to be able to see, amen. No, he wanted to be able to live a full life, but Jesus is calling him to do something greater. But guess what? I believe it just like this. I believe that in the midst, amen, of everything that was going on, yeah. I believe that in the midst of everything that he had seen and done, I believe in his mind, he began to say to himself, but I want to see. Come on, so yeah. what would I do? Come on, I believe he began to see it within Let himself. Jesus. What would I do? And as he began to see it in his mind, it became a word that came across his lips. Yeah. Uh, Say, what would I do? On, what would I do? Do to get what I need. What would I do to get what I need? What would I do to get what God had for me? What would I do? And I began to ask the word, began to be a whisper, and began to be spoken out of his mouth. I began, I believe it began to be a, a shout. What would I do? And he began to get up. What would I do? And he began to throw down on the blind man's clothes. What would I do? And he began to tell a step. What would I do? And then you take another step. What could I do? And you get to run all down the road. What could I do? When you get to fall down, I'm ready to 